I was watching the movie Castaway recently, which is the story of a man who gets washed up on a beautiful but completely deserted island after a plane crash. The story is a moving and sometimes inspirational tale of one man's survival against nature. Somewhere near the end of the second act, this happens. And just like anyone who watches this movie, I felt genuine sadness for Chuck as the music score swelled and his volleyball bobbed and floated away from his desperate hands. And then I thought, how the hell did that happen? How did a movie almost make me cry because a volleyball floated away? To understand why we care about Wilson, we have to understand how he became a character. Human beings are very social creatures and we crave social contact. When that contact is denied, we'll invent it by using inanimate objects. This is called anthropomorphosis. We give these items names and characteristics, just like a real person, and we'll even attribute emotions to them and in extreme cases, we'll imagine how they'll respond. Repeated studies have shown that the lonelier the person is, the more likely they are to anthropomorphize, and the stronger that attachment will be. This explains why Chuck creates Wilson, and partially explains why he's so attached to him. It takes a while for Chuck to become lonely enough to need Wilson, but after a few days alone on the island, he gets pretty mad, injures his hand and throws the volleyball in frustration, giving birth to Wilson. While a normal person looks and sees a volleyball with blood on it, a desperate and lonely person sees a face, a friend. Once Wilson has been created, Chuck begins to speak to him like a real person. He starts to imagine his responses and even has arguments with him. But even though Chuck speaks to Wilson as though he's another character, he's actually an extension of himself. Though he doesn't realize it, Wilson is an externalization of his own internal critical process. Rather than simply being an imaginary person, he's a projection of his own personality. Wilson is the part of Chuck's personality that was a dissenting voice. He contained fear and doubt, but he was also the problem-solving part of his personality. The ball even starts to mirror the same physical changes that Chuck goes through. Over time, it becomes weathered, tan, thinner, and with a tuft of hair poking out the top, just like Chuck. It's a real turning point in the movie for Chuck when Wilson is born. Up until that point, it had been nothing but frustration for Chuck as multiple ideas failed over and over. But almost immediately after Wilson is born, Chuck begins to find success. Having a physical object to bounce ideas off not only seemed to alleviate the pressure from him, it also allowed him to think critically instead of the unplanned emotional responses that he'd been relying on up until that point. In short, Wilson is the reason that Chuck is alive. By the time Chuck decides to leave the island, he's aware on some level that he needs Wilson to be able to think critically and challenge his own ideas. Chuck also recognises the stabilising effect that Wilson has on his emotional well-being. We learned that after three years on the island, Chuck had tried to end his own life by hanging himself from a tree high on a cliff, but had been talked out of it by Wilson. Although Wilson is the voice of dissent to Chuck, he also represents hope. Each time Chuck felt like giving up, he was encouraged to carry on by Wilson, first with the fire, then with the suicide attempt, and again later when he doesn't have enough rope to complete his raft, Wilson tells him he can use the rope from the failed suicide, an idea that Chuck is resistant to, but Wilson pushes him to collect it anyway, and ultimately, without that rope, Chuck would never have escaped. In the same kind of way, that Chuck anthropomorphizes a volleyball into Wilson because he's completely alone, we do something similar. We have no characters besides Chuck to connect to. So like him, we spend almost an entire movie in isolation with no dialogue for small chunks of it. 
The creation of Wilson reduces that isolation, and unconsciously, we begin to think of Wilson as part of Chuck. We spend the largest portion of the movie connecting with Chuck, feeling all of his failures and celebrating his successes. I'm not ashamed to say that I felt connected to both Chuck and Wilson, and one without the other felt like an incomplete character. When Chuck wakes up, after being battered by the storm, with no food, and a raft which is now just a couple of pieces of broken wood, and sees that Wilson is missing, he panics. He dives into the water and swims after him, and the moment when he realises that he has to let Wilson go is a sad and difficult moment because we're not just watching a volleyball or a friend floating away, what we're watching float away is hope.